Uh, I started this drawing in March 2020. It was the first of a series of what became known as the Golden Drawings. Uh, that was the first day I had symptoms of what turned out to be COVID. Um, and I kind of went into the refuge of drawing with a pencil on paper at that time. I was meant to go for a walk and suddenly felt that I was unable to do it. So I went for a walk with my pencil in stead. Uh, I, I often think of Paul Clay's famous phrase that drawing is like taking a pencil for a walk. Um, and on that day, I started an extremely long walk with a pencil, which became the whole series of golden drawings and then finally the Coviad. So this was drawing number one. Um, if you move on, you'll see that these drawings explore some of the most intimate subjects, really, um, family relationships, things that became really terribly important when the threat of uh, when the threat of COVID was there. So this second drawing, for example, has an image of man and woman and child. It's almost like Adam and Eve in the kind of new Garden of Eden. Um, I used images of um, kind of archetypal images. In this one, you see there's a picture of my son, Jacob, who had also caught COVID at that time. Um, he wasn't very symptomatic, just uh, taste and smell. But I, I found at that time, the most important things became prominent. You kind of forgot about all petty concerns and thought about family and friendship. Um, in this drawing, you can see in the in the bottom left corner, I'm my mind is traveling to Switzerland where my daughter had uh, gone to live. And you see there a picture of Lake Zurich in the distance. So I found very, very quickly you're thinking about family a great deal during the threat of COVID. If you go to the next drawing, you'll see there's images there of, of a nest uh, with eggs in the nest. And of course, that's symbolic of the idea of the nest, the family home. Uh, where we all come from. On the left, there's a figure, it's almost a self-portrait, where I have my three children kind of on my mind or growing from my mind, let's say. And at that time, I was still not well, but um, it was really later on that, that it became clear that I was going to get through this quite well. Um, but there's a lot of worries that you have during this time. So drawing number five, again, it's like a self-portrait with my mind kind of filled with all these thoughts, worries, fantasies, ideas of what's going to happen with the future. And I, funnily enough, I found that the, uh, the virus in some way opened up my mind in ways I'd never expected before, allowing me to create really um, imaginative uh, forms and shapes, um, really letting go of my imagination in a very, very free willed way, as you can see in this drawing, where the mind is really creating all these different forms and shapes and ideas. Uh, by drawing number six, uh, I had I wanted to draw an image of infinity, uh, the idea that everything we're going through, that there's a kind of circularity to history, that everything we've been we're going through now has kind of existed before. And some of the images in this drawing relate to my sculptures called Emergence and Ex Nihilo, where you have like a little seed that begins and then it kind of develops almost like an evolution, uh, sort of the pro progression of humanity. And you'll see at the bottom left, there's also trees and lakes. Um, at this time, uh, by day seven, when I'd kind of recovered, I was longing to go walking again. So I kind of make references uh, to the landscape. Um, the next drawing here you see is drawing number 16. By that point, I had recovered. Um, this is a portrait um, of my wife, Samantha, who is had kind of been looking after us and, you know, through great skill and brilliance was sort of holding the whole fort together. And uh, you see kind of she's sort of reclining there, but you see sort of families, people, concerns, all uh, almost like on her back, um, like she has their back, I suppose. But uh, it's also a very natural composition, something unpremeditated, just a feeling of how to express the idea of, you know, the ultimate protector and nurturer. And drawing number 17, um, it's it's like a gestation image. I mean, I, I've been, I made a sculpture not long afterwards called Gestation, where you have like this central figure, almost like a, a fetus or a child, uh, being nurtured by all the people surrounding the child. And I found during this period, so, I mean, we've, 
describe these golden drawings as relating uh, to the period of COVID, but actually they're they're much much broader than that. That was the circumstance in which they were made. Uh, but for example, in this image, I have the idea of a child developing and growing up. But that growth and that experience is is largely to do with other people. Um, parents, uh, grandparents, uh, siblings uh, that that the child encounters and is nurtured with. And e even during the pregnancy period, uh, the child will be aware of those voices and other people that they're connected with. Uh, drawing number 18, by that stage I was uh, going, I was walking again and I took a particular route uh, off Wildwood Road. There's seven ponds um, in the Heath extension, and those ponds, all of those ponds, kind of took on mythic proportions to me. I, I tend, I tended to mythologize everywhere that I was walking in nature, and I, I think during the whole period of COVID, all of us kind of connected uh, with nature much more powerfully than we had done before. Uh, this image of sort of empty clothes. Um, I, it's hard to explain what that means exactly. I think it could mean different things, but the idea of people who vacated themselves or even left this world and their clothes are there is a very, very powerful image. And but but it's also I'm taking a walk there, so it's in a way like thoughts as I'm walking. All the thoughts that are going through uh, my mind. Drawing number nineteen. Uh, I'd seen an exhibition at uh, Tate Britain. Uh, which had a large, a, la a last judgment, uh, a large watercolor by William Blake, which in itself was based on uh, the Sistine Chapel last judgment. And as I was taking a walk one day by the uh, Wildwood Ponds, there's this very, very distinctive large tree there. And what I can only describe almost as a vision or fantasy, I had an idea that this tree was filled with all these uh, people as if in a last a, a kind of last judgment and at that time the whole world you were having the daily news about all the tragic things that were taking place uh, with COVID and so I suppose my mind was in that place but when I looked up at that tree I I had this vision of a kind of whole tree filled with uh, apocalyptic shapes and forms and people as in a kind of last judgment and within in the towards the lower part of the composition you can see a figure walking with this scarf trailing behind it and that became a kind of light motif of these drawings because when i went walking i would actually cover my face with a scarf and go marching through the you know the fields and the landscape and and here again you can see there's a tree that's at a 45 degree angle and that was a real tree that i saw every day on my walk i found it very potent this idea of a tree that's all, all almost fallen down but it's still rooted and still alive even though it's kind of halfway down which made me think that that's a bit like what we're all going through uh, drawing number 26 uh, was a very very ambitious work that took an an awful, an awful lot of time to do. So each of these drawings is is hand drawn in pencil. Uh, takes many many hours at a desk. It's almost a form of meditation, just sitting there drawing for hour and hour. And this one is very very rich uh, with different motifs. Um, some of them are related to sculptures I've made before. For example, towards the top left, they're images of spherical sculptures. The the sculpture I made a sculpture a few years ago at Shire Tzedek in Jerusalem, which is called Soul, um, S O U L, and that's that's the idea that it's outside the hospital. So I wanted to make an image which represented what it means one soul, one human life, what that means, and obviously the famous expression uh, that if you save uh, one life, it's like you've saved the whole world. But this this very, very kind of mysterious drawing, they're kind of pathways going to infinity. I, I, I take these almost as a rep representative of history or time as you go down these different pathways. And then these pathways connect with strands of DNA and other uh, su substances. There's even images of tefillin, and even Kabbalistic images here. Uh, so it's a very, very richly um, symbolic work, this one that takes an awful lot of time to interpret. Drawing number 32, um, I, I wanted to create an image of 
figures going back and forward, um, sort of moving forward to the great horizon. Uh, that's partly inspired by Dutch painting of the uh, 17th century, where you have artists like Hobema who create these vast perspectives. Um, here, this is still about the whole period of COVID. So there's a lot of transformations in nature going on where you have all kinds of creatures coming and going there and actually changing as they move. So uh, we have this idea that nature is in flux. I want to say a word also about the gold. For much of my career, I'd actually deliberately resisted using gold because I found it too, uh, or I considered it almost too decorative. But during the beginnings of COVID, there was this uncanny, beautiful weather um, every day. And um, that seemed quite paradoxical, given what the world was going through at the time. At the same time, when I was younger, I worked at Sotheby's um, in the manuscript department, Department of Medieval Manuscripts. So I was inspired by images of the apocalypse, even periods of, you know, the, during the Black Death um, gold, a, lo a lot of these uh, illuminated manuscripts were made shortly afterwards, um, where gold was used in the backgrounds at that time. So I'm kind of connecting our current world situation with previous times where humanity has sort of confronted uh, similar challenges. And that was a deliberate choice, but also to create this kind of uncanny beauty. So that they're, they're quite potent symbols, but then also they're, they're enlivened with this sort of uh, very, very uncanny alternative reality, this gold. I, I also thought to some degree of Van Gogh when he did his sunflowers, these different gold shades that he used to contrast and bring the paintings to life. Uh, drawing number 37, uh, that's a, a very personal image. Um, as I do every day, I, I put to fill in on every day. And I always thought that those straps are straps that connect us, obviously, to God. Um, but they're also straps to infinity, you know, through time. And I, I had this kind of image of myself floating at the center of the universe, but connected, really connected daily in that way, almost like an electrical charge, but a spiritual electrical charge. Drawing number 38. Um, you have this vast globe floating above. I'm going on my daily walk there with my scarf uh, fluttering behind me as usual. There's the ponds of wildwood on either side. And then as if in, an, in, a, in a vision, there's this vast globe uh, floating above me that I'm kind of imagining. And there's a lot of references there. I mean, qu quite obviously, you could connect that globe with the trees and chimneys and other structures. It looks a, a bit like a COVID form, which I avoided sort of creating that image too, obviously. So here it's a kind of, it's a reference to it, but that vast COVID has other symbols in it too, including chimneys. So I'm connecting sort of the world, the, the current tragedy in the world today with previous uh, periods of uh, tragedy and even genocide. Um, then drawing number 42, it's, I wanted to create an image of the beauty of the mother because uh, at the time, um, my wife and also my mother the separ separated from their children because of the travel restrictions. And I had this idea that hair is almost like an electrical connection across space and, and time, whereby we can be connected to those that we are very, very close to. So you have an image of the mother here with, with her, ha her hair connecting to her children. It's a very potent kind of direct image and in in a lot of these works i want to make visible things that we all think about that are normally invisible so how do you draw the how do you draw the idea of a mother longing or separated from her children and that seems to be a very worthwhile image to create and one that hasn't been created in that way before the idea of hair as a kind of connection and a strand to others Drawing number 44 um, is also a work based on perspective. Um, but I, I, I've done paintings quite similar to this before where the stra it's almost like a weave. I often think that reality is like a vast cloth that's woven, that if you think that all of reality is a vast tapestry and that tapestry is comprised of different experiences of every different person and the story of their lives. And actually reality is that tapestry, but each 
strand is completely different and is a very is an individual story uh, of a particular life at a particular time and and uh, you know cubism the idea of cubism uh picasso and brock developed the idea of cubism that you can s- that reality is not just from one viewpoint but you see all viewpoints uh, simultaneously and that's what they strove to do uh, so i always had this thought that you can have a kind of spiritual cubism if you like uh, where you're showing reality and the way what reality really is, is isn't is just one story from one perspective it's a weave of all those different perspectives joined together drawing number 45 an image of clapping hands uh, every thursday night as we know uh, people come out of their houses they may not have seen anybody else for days um, and they came out to the house kept their distance and applauded for the nhs for the great heroism and dedication of the nhs and i thought i ended up thinking that's really the icon of our moment in time that's it's a very beautiful image in a way it's a a very very um i i I see that as a symbol of our time this clapping but it's also very very positive and very very beautiful and i did two or three works based on that image of the clapping hands which i think is an unforgettable motif and that actually became the front cover of the book of golden drawings that was published by gliori um, in 2020. Uh, drawing number 46 is an image of lockdown so each of us is living in our own little world here so you see um, they're like boxes and um, within each box people are doing different things watching tv writing reading eating um exercising um all in tiny little different worlds i mean that's always the reality for us we all live in our own worlds but i had this idea that lockdown created an amazing image of all these different worlds and actually this drawing um inspired a much more ambitious painting uh where you have literally thousands of these little pods floating in the universe like sparkling stars in a kind of night sky um and that painting uh, will be exhibited later but this is this is the drawing that, that that led to that painting of and and the painting is actually titled lockdown and it's an image of the entire world on all continents all simultaneously and also reflections of different uh, countries where everybody's locked down uh, in these little pods Drawing number 56 is again a similar, well, it's a similar idea, but where what I've done here is create sort of different bubbles. They're like um, different, well, I suppose we call them support groups or family groups that are separate. But in this work, they're like different planets in a, in a kind of starry night again, again, a sort of Van Gogh uh, reference, but very, very differently done. The idea that we are like little planets or stars uh, comprised of groups of families and um this this work was was reproduced in the times literary supplement recently as a kind of symbolic motif of this period in time where we're all living in our support bubbles and that that uh, as we'll see in some other drawings but also in a large series of paintings painted simultaneously uh, i explore the image of the bubble and it, the paintings are different because they're uh, largely about reflections and how do you paint something so fragile as a bubble, but they're always figures within them. Uh, drawing 58, um, well, I've always thought the idea of a partly hidden face had great power and beauty. Um, in my sculpture, uh, Visitor, which is in Cavendish Square, you can see it there in Cavendish Square, there's an image of half a head kind of sticking out the ground. So I've always loved the idea of drawing partial faces and then seeing so many people with masks uh, kind of apart from being obviously a great symbol of the time we're living through and something unforgettable that none of us will ever forget that image of half the world wearing masks. But also for me, it's something even more broader, broadly powerful, because when you hide something, when you shield something, you kind the imagination is left to kind of uh, think about what's hidden so in this work it's on the one on the left the you know they're wearing a mask but on the other it's the eyes that are covered so i'm kind of making that equivalence uh drawing 66 um is a, a, a tribute to george 
uh, Floyd, who was tragically murdered during this period, um, in what's another one of those unforgettable images of our time, uh, where he was um, suffocated slowly by having a knee on his neck. And that's it, it was an image that I think none of us could forget because, again, it's it taps into imagery that I've used before. In Project One, a series that I did at the Roundhouse, there was an image of a foot on, on a head, on a person. Um, and to me, that was the ultimate image of uh, persecution or the domination of one human being of another. So, um, and that, that's partly connected to George Orwell. When you read 1984, he describes totalitarianism or, or basically persecution of others as an image, you know, of a, of a boot stamping on a human head forever. So, you know, the death of George Floyd, I, I, I think, uh, tapped into that awful image of, you know, the human, uh, one human dominating another. Drawing 92, uh, this represents the whole world, the whole, it's like a map of the, the whole world, where the, whole, the entire world is composed of these support bubbles. Um, and again, this was a drawing that led to a very large painting where the whole uh, world is comprised of these bubbles. And this drawing was a very, very hard task because there's a tremendous amount of detail with these hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of, or even thousands of bubbles, each containing an individual or a family. And that then sparked off uh, the idea of really going for it and making a drawing that was absolutely insane, insanely ambitious uh, with detail, a vast range of detail. And um, if you can see drawing this drawing title 10 plagues, um, that's part of a, a very highly ambitious work, which I embarked on the beginning of 2021, uh, called the Coviad. Now the Coviad was inspired uh, not only by my having worked on these very detailed drawings already, uh, but by having picked up a small book that I have at home of the Bayo Tapestry. Uh, the Bayo Tapestry, as we all know, um, kind of uh, kind of captures the the time of the Norman Conquest, a, a, a very great moment of change in in British history, anyway. And I had this idea that the age of COVID, what we'd all been going through the last year, really. Um, is also another seismic moment in history, not just British history, obviously, in the history of humanity. And I had this idea of doing something almost like a contemporary version of the Bayo Tapestry, um, where, where there's this very, very long kind of storybook image of the whole experience of the last year. And this work here, Ten Plagues, is a part of the Coviad. The Coviad, th there's a video... Um, of the Coviad, um, which was made by my esteemed colleague, Greg Baker, um, which is, it shows the entire panorama of, of the Coviad, which in the end, it comprised 70 large sheets of paper, all drawn, hand-drawn, and then embellished with gold leaf. And they're all interconnected. They're all kind of finished works in their own right. I didn't rush them. I took hours and hours and hours over each one. Um, and but overall, it's one work, the Coviad, which is a kind of contemporary Bayeux tapestry, absolutely brimming with a vast range of references and detail about our experiences of the last year, and starting with the origins of the pandemic, and then moving on to the whole period of lockdowns, um, isolation, uh, the NHS, the clapping for the NHS. Um, and literally every aspect of, of of the whole thing, and then rich in references to other art, uh, for example, uh, Goya's uh, depictions. Uh, we, we, I have bats there, which are inspired by Goya, and then also references to all kinds of creatures and beings, for example, the dodo, you know, extinct beings, and the traveling of human beings across continents on boats, aeroplanes, all kinds of modern travel. But this one here, the Ten Plagues, it was at this time, um, really in April 2020, uh, that the Passover happened. And 
I was very struck by how a lot of the images of the Passover were very, very relevant to the experience of COVID. So this one here is the 10 plagues, which I've drawn in great detail, starting with the plague of blood um, and then um, of frogs and all the other plagues are represented there and tied in with the experience of COVID. Uh, this work here is called Four Sons, again, inspired by the 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 image of the four sons from the passover the idea that we can have four children each of which each each child is so different even though they share the same parents i thought that was a, a very interesting thing and also at a time of covid the fact that every person however close has a different experience of the whole process and this image of the four sons you have uh one who's fairly devout you've got one who's actually a bit of an addict and a bit of a lost soul. I thought that was important. One is a, a technology freak and then one who's surrounded by questions. And I think that's kind of a reference to sort of the mental health crisis at this time as well. So you have different people experiencing reality in very, very different ways. And then this panel from the Coviad is called Slavery. And that it refers to the concept of slavery from the Passover, but I've tied it in with different aspects of slavery, uh, which is what the uh, Passover makes us think about. But at the same time, the, the tragic events surrounding the death of uh, George Floyd and then the whole period of unrest afterwards made us all confront uh, the disgraceful legacy of, of slavery. And in this work, there's images that relate to the history of slavery, including the boat and also the cattle trucks. Um, so it's really delving quite deep into those really important issues and, and showing that how it's a timeless concern, really. And, and, and one of the concerns that was brought into high relief by the experience of COVID and all and the social unrest that followed. Um, again, from the Coviad, this is another. So I did this. A lot of the images in the Coviad are sets of four images. So you have these compositions that I call them the quads, which is kind of a reference to like the triptych, like you find in Francis Bacon, you have the idea of triptych, three connected paintings. So with the quad, I'm kind of playing with that, but making four connected paintings, which can result in some interesting compositional um, effects. So whilst all these works have great thematic uh, elements, they're also at the end of the day, uh, compositions, you know, aesthetic compositions. So here you've got kind of swirling kind of vortex, uh, which happens in a number of the quad uh, images. And this is based on the uh, Song of the Goat, the Chad Gadya from the uh, Passover again. Uh, the Chad Gadya is a story of a goat that's bought for two coins, and then the goat is eaten by a cat that's then eaten by a dog or bit by a dog. Uh, the dog is then hit with a stick. The stick is then burnt with the fire. The, the fire is put out by water. The water is drunk by an ox. The ox is killed by a slaughterer. The slaughterer is killed by the angel of death. And then the angel of death is killed by God. And uh, that, that's a very profound story. It's about how every moment in time, how every culture or how, how every empire is replaced by another in a kind of constant, swirling, endless passage of time and you know, every culture thinks they're the ultimate culture, but then it's just replaced by another and another and another. So, and, you know, at a time like now, this is a time where you have those sort of thoughts about how nothing is forever. Everything is replaced eventually by something else. And it, it's a kind of evolution in a way, a kind of survival of the fittest, but even the fit then move on for something else that eats them and then moves on to something else. It's also like the cycle of nature, that nature is like that too. And then in this work, Zodiac 2021, uh, also from the Coviad, we have the idea that the Zodiac, that our sort of destinies are encoded in the stars. Uh, one of the ideas of the Passover is actually that they're not, that we can break free of what's apparently predetermined for us in the stars. That, and, and there is, a, in, this, in this particular quad, it's almost like an explosion if you look at it visually. Um, that we actually, there is this idea of freedom that we can break free and uh, nothing really constrains us. And, um, you know, I, I think that's relevant to the age, to the time we've all been through in COVID. Perhaps we're all a bit worried about going back into the world, 
Um, we have some trepidation. We're excited to get back, but there's also some trepidation. But I think this whole period has given us what the positive side of the of the tragedy is the idea that we are a bit freer than we think. We don't need to necessarily conform to cultural norms or social norms. Even the thing of working from home, you know, something that would be almost unthinkable uh, even a few years ago, that there may be great changes ahead that have been hastened by COVID, not, not all of which are bad, that there may be sort of new times ahead and new ways of thinking about life. And with the COVID, I wanted to create a, a single sort of dramatic ambitious sort of monumental work that encapsulated all those things that, well in a in a way like the bayo tapestry for its time in a very different way um that that's what's expressed there